16 stone lads just about to be introduced to the four gentlemen who are survivors of the rugby league's immortals for the hall of fame nine players went into this museum at the on monday when he was open and here we have four alex murphy brian bevan billy boston and gus risman to be presented there is gus risman 25 years playing career first started at the age of 18 back in 1929 with salford and of course two sons who played bev risman who represented the british lions at rugby union and captain the 1968 world cup tour at rugby league and his son john who's done such tremendous work up in cumbrian rugby league especially with carlisle what a career this man had 25 years he played for rugby league moved on to workington in 1946 and founded the club there in cumbria an incredible 873 matches he must have had a few bumps and bruises so gus risman just about to be introduced i was chatting to him earlier on and he said what a lovely day for rugby i wish i was playing well doesn't he look fit enough and what a reception the grand old man of rugby league is getting Possibly we can hear one or two boos going around the ground as one or two supporters from different clubs see the gentleman who is coming next. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's my old friend, it is, it's Alex Murphy. No one, I think, caused more controversy in rugby league than my good friend here. But what a player. A great honour to play with him, an honour to play against him. And a mixture of boos, a mixture of cheers, a mixture of jeers. But nevertheless, I think all acknowledging what a wonderful player this man was. Signed for St. Helens at 16 years of age. Back in 1956, a tourist at 18 led three sides to victory at Wembley, Lee, Warrington and St. Helens. And now a successful coach with the St. Helens club. very good crowd assembled here to pay tribute to these four gentlemen and two wingmen fittingly wings often the stars of the games in rugby league on the left there Brian Bevan and on the right a large bulky figure of ex-Cardiff Billy Boston Brian Bevan the Ex Warrington wingman, still in good health, just moved up to retirement in the, the Blackpool area. World record number of tries, this man 796 tries in his career, over 100 hat tricks. Wingman extraordinaire. I can remember playing against him when he was at the latter end of his career. That bald head, bandages around his knees, bandages around his elbows, but nobody could get hold of him. Sadly, never played for Australia, never played in Australia, played all his rugby with the Warrington Club and then Blackpool. And finally, Billy Boston, one of the most spectacular of players, signed Mike Gus Risman from Cardiff with the Cardiff Athletic Club. And uh, Cliff Morgan often tells of how when uh, he was starting in the game and Billy was playing alongside him. What a fine, strong wingman he was. Could play centre as well. The great Wigan wingman. I remember tackling this chap a few times. I think I still wake up in the morning with nightmares of Billy running at me and bruises and stiff shoulders. And it was all because of this 15 stone giant of a man. Six Wembley finals and still in the game now the president of the Redditch Amateur Rugby League Club in Worcestershire and it's nice to see that about 25 of the Redditch players have come up to give him the accolades here today. These just four of the 
living members in the Hall of Fame. We have others like Billy Batten and Albert Rosenfeld. And I'm sure we'll see one or two players on this pitch this afternoon who in the future will become members. And certainly in the rest of the uh, world side, we couldn't have picked, I don't think, a better selection of players, good sprinkling representation from the rugby league playing nations, Australia, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea. The Gavin Miller there just shaking hands with Gus Risman and big Sam Bacco, number 10. Burley prop, just signed for Leeds, Noel Cleal. I'll bet Gus Risman's thankful he's not tackling one or two of those characters this afternoon. And the two substitutes there, number 14, Cliff Lyons from the Manly Club in Australia, and number 15, Peter Brown from Teata 2 in New Zealand. Great Britain, coach Mal really kept faith with the side that served him so well out there in Australia. Ten of the lads playing here this afternoon that played in that third test win. One of them there, David Stevenson, big, strong, powerful lad. And Kevin Beardmore, the hooker, couldn't play in the test. Remember when Paul Hume, the witness lad, the second row, did such a valuable job while Kevin Beardmore, the regular hooker, brought back in there. Roy Martin of Fire and Sean Edwards recovered, thankfully, from the serious knee injury that cost him his place. Little Andy Gregory, I'm sure there'll be a battle between him and Alan Langer. Roy Powell, the hard-working lead, second row and substitute. And John Holdsworth, the referee from Kipax. And Robin Whitfield, the reserve referee. Two touch judges. An honour for them as well. Alex Murphy, as ever, having a word with referees. Never stops talking to them, telling them what to do. And Billy Boston, I think knows one or two of these touch judges well as he hurtled down the wing. And Les Bettinson just having a, a manager, a final word with his players. It certainly is an important game for Great Britain. We saw a revived Great Britain side in Australia and hopefully that revival will continue. The rest of the world out to... <laughs> and here's my friend coming to climb up to the commentary box doesn't he love the jeers and the boos love him or hate him certainly one of the greatest personalities in the game Sam Bacco number 10 just limbering up very fit powerful lads these the average weight of this rest of the world side pack especially is about 16 stone those two props 8 and 10 8 Kurt Sorensen from New Zealand and Bacco from Australia. playing nations. Thank you. 
formality's over, and I think the players will be keen to get into the action. The rest of the world side, I wouldn't like to put a valuation on this rest of the world side, but I don't think we'd get a penny change out of a couple of million pounds. Plenty of pace there in the backs with Australia's Dale Shearer, Michael O'Connor, and some power there in the back three. Mark Graham, the captain, Noel Cleal, and Gavin Miller. One or two of those forwards will be wanting to renew the rivalry with the, the Great Britain. Plenty of interest there in David Plans, the only non-tourist from Castleford brought into the uh, Great Britain side, and a very lively fast back three, Mike Gregory, Andy Platt, and Ellery Hanley. Ideal conditions, I think, for this Great Britain side. Referee John Holdsworth just asking Great Britain skipper Ellery Hanley to toss. And he's staying as he is. So, at last, the game underway, I think. And Alex, re recovered your breath? It's uh, very, very nice, uh, Ray. Lovely day. We should in for a cracking game. And, uh, it's going to be interesting to see one or two of the duels between uh, certain players, Langer and Andy Gregory. Uh, Ella and Sean Edwards, you know, you can go on forever and ever. Yes, and I think a lot of uh, pride, as we said, at stake for some of these Great Britain lads. I think they want to show what they're really worth, don't they? Well, I think they want to get a little bit of pride back, uh, back Ray, and I think today's the time. Mike Gregory, number 11 there for Great Britain, just taking his time, nothing that forwards like better than to just get a feel of the ball, especially on a nice crisp day like this. Kevin Wall. Good, powerful burst from Ward. And interesting to see Great Britain using the kicking game that uh, we saw them use so well in those three tests in Australia. Paul Lachlan putting the ball downfield and the Great Britain forwards moving up quickly. Hugh Grattier, the French captain. Bacco, very popular here with the Leeds crowd. And the rest of the world using similar tactics that's a good long kick from Shearer and a fire letting it go sensibly leaving the ball just coming across the ground Ray it's uh, it's very very slippery underfoot and uh, we've had we've had quite a lot of rain and uh, I think one or two of the lads will find it uh, difficult to you know take a stud Gregory well, couldn't see the value of doing a little chip kick but just outside your own 25-yard line. Presented the ball there to the rest of the world. Bacco. Miller, good distributive forward. Mark Graham. Interesting that the dummy half back here the French hooker Thierry Valero doesn't speak a word of English and I know Don Ferner had problems with him in training but there's no problem here Dale Sheena going for the line just lacked that vital yard of pace and the handover six tackles so the handover to the Great Britain side Lachlan the rest of the world looked to have settled the better, Alec. Yes, it's, uh, it was always just a matter of uh, whether some of these lads who've never played together before, how they will knit together. But having just watching Dale, Dale Shearer, it just shows you what a class player this fella is, because he's not played now for a couple of months. Yeah, some class players still go offside. John Holdsworth uh, spotting Alan Langer offside. So, Paul Lock to kick to touch. One of the Youngsters, 21 years old, brought into the Great Britain tour and was such a, a sensation over there in Australia. <coughs> Woodell. Please! 
this rest of the world side moving up very very quickly in defense Oh, that's a good ball. Just couldn't take it, Gregory. But well picked up by Numapo. Bal Numapo here, the <laughs> captain of Papua New Guinea. <laughs> One or two reckon that this uh, match, although labelled a challenge match might be something an exhibition but i think from this tackling already alec there's nothing exhibition about this is no, there i think there's too much pride at state ray and uh, to be quite honest there's too much class as well oh yes and that was a class pass there from mark graham beautifully judged i think one of the advantages of a player the size of mark graham he can ride a tackle take a tackle just look at the height of him there six foot five and yet still get that ball away Hanley. Edwards. Andy Platt transferred from St Helens to Wigan this season for £150,000. And John Edwards, another Wigan player. a little bit of experience there Ray, in that tackle uh, Mark Graham he just made sure that Ellery Hanley couldn't release the ball which Ellery is a very strong lad and he's capable of doing it Edwards to Rattier very experienced uh, wingman this uh, this French lad 22 caps for France Kurt Sorensen. These forwards just testing each other here at the moment. The early stages, just taking the ball at first receiver. Well, that was a, a wild pass, but it was worth it to Namapo. He's still going, this lad. He's a strong <laughs> lad. <laughs> Graham playing the blind side well. looking for space oh well taken by Lachlan no, not a knock on just managed to hold it I think it might have been better if the ball had gone out there Alec yes I think we've got a lot of pace on the flanks Ray Martin Afire and David Plange and I, I don't think uh, you know we've got to play this game down the middle because one thing the rest of the world side will have they can seal the middle up but I think they'll have a few problems outside Ooh, looked like an interception Gavin Miller read that very well but advantage play on there I think the simple rule is, Ray, uh, never turn your back. You learn that at school and uh, prof professional players to do that. It's very bad. That was a good tackle. Well, a knock on, but that was a good tackle by Steve Ello, which saved a tricky situation there. <coughs> okay. I think this is one area where Great Britain should have the advantage as the match wears on. The, a well knit pack together, and somebody feeling like Andy <coughs> Gregory there. Well, he has been penalised. Uh, I think uh, that went under the loose forwards' feet. But I don't think really Andy had any need to feed the scrum. I mean, it was his head and ball, and uh, a good solid pack. Well, I think what you've got now, Ray, with, with your head and ball, there's no reason to feed the second row. But he's a typical scrum half, isn't he? And, and all good number sevens, Ray, tend to cheat a little bit. Well, you should know, Alec. <laughs> Back off. Both sides driving forward with these, with the props. Back off and Sorensen for the rest of the world. Waddell and Ward for Great Britain. No, that's a good ball from Gavin Miller. Noel Cleal split the defence. 
Steve Allen, he's got pace and he's got the wing. Oh, Rattier missed it. Well, certain try there. All that Rattier had to do was catch the ball and the poor lad dropped him. But what a pass there from Gavin Miller in midfield. It split the defence and no clean there. Come on, it's just the right time. But it's resting there. Well, there is a heel against the head. I wouldn't be surprised if we see one or two of these. The French lad hooking with a New Zealand and an Australian prop. They only met up on Thursday. Still no score, just the nine minutes gone, <clears> just the two chances to the rest of the world. And I think Alex should be in the lead by now, shouldn't they? Yes, that should have been a searching try, Ray. There's no excuse for professional players. Well, you've only got to look at it. Look at the big man go here. Just watch him here. He, he does look like Grizzly Adams, doesn't he? When he, they know the fell off the television, releases the ball. But watch what happens here. This has got to be a try. Ella will be very disappointed with this. Should have drawn the man. Definitely should have drawn it. But Rattier, he not he not like that. Well taken by Shearer and O'Connor. This lad can run. He's a wingman. Come centre. Waddell. Oh, that's a lovely dummy from Gregory. He's got outside him. Oh, he should have passed outside, I think. A chance gone begging for Great Britain, but at last beginning to move. Or fire. Well spotted there by the French wingman Ratier. Edwards. That's a good one. Connor. Good high kick there from Sean Edwards in the <coughs> shadow down there in that bottom right hand corner. Don Ferner, the Australian coach, using the big forwards, I think, first of all, typical Australian style to drive down the middle, suck in the Great Britain forwards, then move it <coughs> on. That's a good ball again. Valero. He's a strong lad, this French hooker. Yes, and uh, I don't think Malcolm really will be too happy about the way the rest of the world is splitting Great Britain. Every time they get the ball down the middle, they're making 20 and 30 yards, and uh, th this tackling will have to be tightened up. Steve Aller, will he look for the chip or the pass? Shearer. But it's the final pass that's going astray. I'm sure that the uh, rest of the world coach, Don Ferner, won't be very happy with this. They've split Great Britain three times, and three times they've lost the vital pass. Ward. Well, this again, uh, and Ella again, he'd be very disappointed. He lays a lovely ball off here to Dale Shearer, and Dale, you know, would normally finish these, but just look what happens. Throws a ball and the pass goes anywhere. I think the roar of the crowd says it all. <coughs> a knockout. Just walking over that patch then, Ray, where the, uh, he, he took the ball then, it's, uh, it's very, very heavy and, and the ball's a little bit greasy. You know, it's very, very heavy on the foot there and uh, it's pretty soft as well. Certainly been a lot of rain here in Leeds in the past 48 hours. Edwards. That's a good ball to David Plange. But a good ankle tackle by Michael O'Connor. I think it saved a tricky situation there. He had uh, Stevenson and a fire outside him. Gregory. Stevenson. Gregory again. I think what we've got to do, uh, Ray, really, is great bit when they get the ball. They've got to release it to Martin a fire a lot quicker than what they are doing. 
They're trying to make the break for him instead of letting him use his pace. And then turning it back inside, Alan. Well, I think this is a disease what's creeping into rugby league. Yes, play on, play on, he's lost it. Good work there from Kevin Beardmore. That's what a hooker should be doing. Low to the ground, scavenging, picking up the loose ball. Ward. Ten yards now then from this rest of the world line. Oh, it's interception, no clue. How many times already in this match have we seen this? Big second row, come along, Cruanti. We should have had four or five tries on the board so yes, far. Yes, I we? think uh, Don Ferner will be very, very disappointed with the finishing rate. It's been absolutely appalling, you know. These are world-class players and there's no excuse, uh, you know, for not being able to finish. Here's one, Alan Langer, Numapo. Of course, well, that's a penalty. Silly there by Sean Edwards, no need for it. Immediately on front of the post. No need for it at all. One expects better from professionals than that. Well, Sean Edwards in. Mapo gets the ball in. I just watch Sean whips it out of his hand. There's no need for this. It's a stupid penalty. And just as he's getting up, watch this. Flicks it right out. Watch the arm. Here it comes. So 15 minutes gone. This could be the first points on the board then. Michael O'Connor to to take the kick. O'Connor, the Australian centre from Manly, a rugby union player originally, 13 rugby union tests with the Wallabies. Now over here, guesting with St Helens. And he misses it. Well, Alec, I can understand why Paul Lachlan's taking the goals at St Helens. Uh, well, we've got three world-class kickers, Ray, and I don't think Michael O'Connor will be too happy about that. If it had been at St Helens, neither would I. So, Lachlan to drop out. And again, a chance gone begging. Still Great Britain nil, rest of the world nil, but we should have had four to five tries on there. Valero. That's a good ball from Steve Ellen again, back on. Now this surely must be a try, Ellen is in. To Mark Graham, he'll make it, no problem. Good support play there from the second row. And it was the passing in midfield again that split Great Britain. No doubt about it, but this Great Britain defence is very, very slack in midfield. <laughs> Rest of the world four, Great Britain nil. And really, they've done all the pressing, they've split Great Britain time and time again. No more than that, they deserve. Well, they've had uh, three or four chances, but watch it again. We're split down the middle and on the short side. A lovely short ball here and a beautiful break by Sam Bako. Now, Steve Eller, he's had a couple of chances before. He doesn't want to miss this. He nearly makes a mess of it. But Big Mark Graham, no problem. Good try. So, a more difficult kick for Michael O'Connor. About 20 yards out. Just on the 15 yard mark. No wind here at Headingley. No problem this time. Good kick. So I think Michael O'Connor got over his first kick. Six points to nil for the rest of the world. And here we have it again. This is a lovely break by Big Sam Bacco. He's got a fine turn of pace here. Just watch him. He's looking either side. A lovely ball to Steve Ellen. Now, just watch this. He nearly makes a mess of it, but look who's there, Mark Graham. He can't believe his luck. What a good try. A little bit of a squabble as to who's got the ball, but Gavin Miller's got it, the number 13. Sorensen. Just talking to Don Ferner Ray, before the game, he was had a conversation and he was telling me that um, they're going to keep it simple, just uh, basic football, 
uh, because he's got so much class in the side. He's hoping that they'll click together and um, and finish off a lot of good moves. Well, it looks that way, Alec. They're using the sort of uh, one-two with the forwards first of all to absorb the the pack and then moving it out via Ellen. And uh, what a game is uh, Steve Ellen having? I think what he's trying to do now is raise uh, the, the new the. Uh, Uke from France can't speak English. Oh, beautiful sidestep. What a try there from Sean Edwards. That's class, real class. Who say people can't score tries from a sex club? Lovely switch of movement and that perfectly executed sidestep. So what a reply from Great Britain. Six points to four for the rest of the world. Only youngster this lad yet. What mature head on his shoulders and a good turn of pace. And it looks really comparatively straightforward kick for David Stevenson. I think that's interesting, Alec, letting David Stevenson take the kicks on his home ground here. Yes, I think there's a little bit of sentiment. Uh, he's a good goal kicker as well, man. So, Great Britain looking to draw level. And they do, six points each. And I don't think we could have had a better reply there than that try from Sean Edwards. This is an absolute cracking try from a very, very good player. You wouldn't believe, Ray, that this kid has actually been getting booed week after week at Wigan. But just watch how he flips around him here. A class try from a class player. There's no problem with him. Turns sheer around the wrong way. He's got the pace. He's got the confidence. That's a good try. Yes, there's been a few problems at Wigan. I think uh, Sean Edwards taking some time to to get over his knee injury and one or two of the crowd a little bit frustrated but he's a class player he, he'll come through so 20 minutes gone in this red trophy challenge first half great britain six rest of the world six. Oh, that's a good pass from ward they work hand in hand these two casabin lads kevin ward the prop kevin beard more the hooker good understanding Edwards, Mike Gregory. No, he was he was actually passing the ball before the tackle. Never looked at the man. I think what Great Britain have got to do, Ray, is when they have this ball, is, is keep hold of it for you know the six tackles because really they should have their legs on the rest of the world because they're a lot fitter because some of these lads from the rest of the world have not paid for two months. Yeah. And also Great Britain have had the ball. They've taken four scrums so far. Well, poor Rattier there, not really able to catch the ball yet. And nice to see Noel Clean there, just having a word with him. I think there's a difference in France, Ray, when they play with the ball. It's not quite as hard as what our ball is, it's a little bit softer. And I think he's, having a, he's grabbing at it instead of just letting it come to him. And that's the third run. Very stocky, strong little wing man this from the defence club in Port Moresby, Papua New Guinea. Interesting to see the combination between these uh, second rows and Gavin Miller. Just a short slip pass again, look at him there, just looking for support, he gets into back all this time. This is where the danger is all the time in midfield. First and second receiver coming from Miller. Here he is again. Well, it's play on, it's a try, no clean, but it was no clean try, but it was Gavin Miller's movement again, twice in the last 60 seconds, he split Britain right down the middle. Uh, this is what's happening in uh, Australia now, Ray, with the smaller forwards. So, rest of the world in the lead, 10 points to Duke 6. And suddenly they... Look to be putting it together, this star-studded side. Well, this is a try which a Great Britain will want to forget about. <laughs> they have a chance to retrieve the ball here. It looks a searching try. Lovely ball from Gavin Miller. Flips it up from Crusher Creel. Can't believe he's lucky. Is, is that my ball? <laughs> Can't believe it. O'Connor then with another comparatively straightforward kick. 
He is quite a prolific point scorer down under in Australia. And there's another two. So, rest of the world reply, 12 points to six now in the lead. And looking very, very dangerous in midfield. Well, this is the try. You just watch Gavin Millen. He always makes the ball available. Crusher knocks it up. Now watch Gary Schofield. He has one goal, two goals, and Crusher can't believe his luck. New map up. This lad Valero likes to run from the acting half back position. <laughs> well, that's play on again, but no, that is a knock on now. Good refereeing by John Holsworth, obviously keeping with the traditions of this game, looking for a fast open game, allowing plenty of advantage. I think Red Britain are going to have to close this side down a lot quicker than what they are doing. Oh, that's a good move. Oh, well, that was a bad pass. But here's still a chance, Stevenson. The fire. And offside. Well, I think that was bad play to start with. I think there's no reason at all why the centres are bringing the ball back inside. Are they? We have two very, very fast wings here on the Great Britain side. Martin and Fire simply itching for the ball, and yet they're not giving it him, are they? No, what we've got to do, we've got to give him plenty of space, Ray. He's got to electrify him pace, and which, what they're trying to do is give him five-yard start. The fella's the fastest guy on the field. They've got to release the ball. Look at this, inside again. Now, look, he's got pace. He's got. He just flicks it out of his hand. But look where Ellery Allen is. And Gary Schofield, good decision from John Oldsworth. Just 15 minutes to half time, 12 points to six for the rest of the world, and that the sixth scrum to Great Britain. So, certainly, the rest of the world having problems there at the scrummage. Gregory. Can you imagine what's going on in them scrums there with a French hooker who can't speak English and an Australian telling him to pull his finger out? Can you imagine what's going on in that scrum? I can. Sean Edwards. Yes, yeah, a penalty. Referee Holsworth having a word there with Gavin Miller, lying on at the, at the play of the ball, stopping Edwards from getting up. Ward. A tricky move. Not really effective with. Well, that was silly. <laughs> I think uh, there's one thing about Andy Gregory. He's only small, he's five foot four, but he really does annoy people. Especially if you're a big forward like Baco and you weigh 16 and a half stone. You don't like taking cheese. Just look at this little like. guy, Ray. I think he's. I, I think he must have took two lots of spinach today. Just look at him. He will not like this. Look at him. Oof. And crush it. I think it was then, not Sam Bako. And then Bako looks at the referee and says, "Do you mean me, sir?" <laughs> well, he's got that kind of a face, Ray. He's, he looks like a choir boy in drag. Good God. So Stevenson then with a, a chance to. Pull Great Britain back. Well worth having a go at goal. One or two of the crowd shouting to run the ball, but uh, Great Britain looking for the win. And two points at this stage, very valuable. It's well flighted and it's accurate. No problems there then. David Stevenson, second kick of the match, 12 points to 8 now then, for the rest of the world It's a very important kick that as well because, uh, you know, a try and a goal puts him in front and that's a nice position to be in, but just saying before the game, Ray, Don Fern was saying that uh, he's going to bring Crusher Cleal off after 20 minutes, I think the way he's playing I think he's going to have, have second thoughts Well I think one of the problems was that uh, Noel Cleal has suffered in Australia this season with a lot of fitness problems and, uh, but certainly he looks to be enjoying himself Tell me, shed st uh, two stone for this game. Woodell.
Paul Lachlan. That's a good kick again, putting the pressure on Ratier. He's knocked on a couple of times, so good professionalism there, keeping the ball down at him. That's the man, Ray, isn't he? That, that's what uh, you know he's worried about. Will he blow up? Will he run out of steam? Because he's a big man, and like I say, it's bound to tell he's had no football for two months. defence came up very, very quickly. Hanley. Waddell. Oh, that's a good charging run for Waddell. Good old competitors, these two, Waddell and Bako, now playing for the same club, Leeds here. Testing Rattier again, but... He's up to it this time. I think, I think for my money, uh, Alex, Ellery Hanley's going at acting half back a few too many times. I think Great Britain want him out at number two or three, running wide, don't they? Yes, I think what we're, Great Britain are tending to do is to play the ball down the middle. Uh, you know, we're turning the ball back inside, and, and that's fatal against a side like this. Real again. He's a fierce competitor. He tells me his hobby, he likes to go wild pig hunting in Australia. I certainly wouldn't like to be hunted by him. Well, yeah, ten minutes to go in this first half. Rest of the world still 12 points to eight. Ward. Oh, that's a good ball, and there's Pete Ward again. Good combination that Ray uh, Ward and Beardsmore play for the same club, understand each other, and I think Great Britain want to make some of this uh, attack. Lachlan, that's a good ball. Stevenson looking for a fire this time. He finds him. Oh, he comes inside nicely. Schofield. A fire. Can he get the ball down? No, he can't. Held over the line. But tremendous combination there between a fire and Schofield. Edwards, oh, in a long pass to Tabella. An ambitious pass from John Edwards and well read there by Steve Allen. Palero, he's in again this lad, Valdu Mapo. He's only five foot eight, this uh, Papua New Guinea captain, Balmy Mapo, but he certainly is a little pocket Hercules, very strong, very powerful. Miller again, back to Numapo. Shearer, that was a beautiful pass to O'Connor, got a two to one. Still going. Valeri again. Langer, it's a little bit like basketball. Sorensen, Bako. I know he's down. I like the look of this uh, little French hooker, eh? This Valerio, he's a, he's a very, very good player when he has the ball in his hands. Hello. And that's good play there by Ellery Hanley. Not just the, the kick, but we should have noticed David Plans came inside there. Ellery Hanley took the wing spot in case the rest of the world came down the blind side. And I think that's what Steve Eller was looking for, Alan, wasn't he? He was looking for the, the, the empty oh, space. Yes, it's, uh, it's a little bit of class. This, this Steve Eller, he's, uh, he's a tremendous thinker of a game. The Great Britain now, what I'm looking at, we're looking at in ones and twos. We've got to have a, a little bit more work rate from the lads because uh, this rest of the world side is looking a good outfit. Oh, good pass. Beautiful pass. Cool fire. Just couldn't get away, but just look at the man who tackled him. Number 12, no clean. And Don Ferner was worried about his fitness, and there he's coming across the field, and he's bringing a man like a fire down. <laughs> Sam Peter Brown, the New Zealand forward, coming on for Sam Bako. Obviously, Bako must have an injury.
this is a tremendous break by Martin Afaya. Every time his kid gets the ball, he brings the crowd to his feet. Very exciting player. Just five minutes to go then in this first half. Great Britain looking to get that vital try. Couldn't take them in the half-time lead. Gregory, there's a chance here. Oh, beautiful pass. Stevenson's in, I think. Yes, he is. It was Gregory there, the chunky little scrum half. Held himself up, put the pass out, and Stevenson had the strength to go over. 12 points each. And I'm sure Great Britain will be content at that. They gave far too many chances away in that opening 20 minutes. But they've come back. You never know how strong this fella is. He's a lovely try for Great Britain, very badly needed, but watch him again. Little Popeye bounces out to one tackle. He's a strong little fella, this. Slips the ball, and David Stevenson does well here. It has to be scored, this. This is a good try. Just reaches over. But a difficult kick for Stevenson. Right out there on the touchline, and of course, <laughs> looking into the sun. But he's a very strong lad, side foot kicker, likes to swing the ball around. 12 points each. Could Stevenson put Grey Britain in the lead? Already kicked two. No. Not got the strength. So, Great Britain 12, rest of the world 12. I think I'd have a tendency with David Stevenson because he's not the strongest kicker, in, uh, you know, of the lot. I would tend to give Paul Lachlan a kick because uh, he can definitely well him over from that position. Yes, David Stevenson's very accurate from within that sort of 25-yard area, isn't he? So, O'Connor to kick off. I think we've got rid of the fears where that this was going to be a, a some kind of friendly game because uh, there don't seem to be many friends out there. Certainly not amongst these these prop forwards. Kevin Ward and Hugh Woodell driving in. Gregory. Andy Platt. Yeah, I think we could see a little bit more running uh, from Andy Platt. He is a running forward, Ray, and I think, uh, you know, the Great Britain lads could use him a bit wider out. Gregory and Hanley are moving up very, very quickly. In rugby league, the defenders have to keep five yards off the man who receives the ball. Just three minutes to half time. Peter Brown, first touch of the ball. New Zealand test prop, Alan Langer. Oh, that's a nice little chip kick. But a knockout. Referee Holdsworth again, I think. <coughs> Looking for the advantage if Martin O'Fire could have got the ball, but he didn't. He's always well positioned, Ray. He's, uh, he's always up with the ball and uh, he prides himself on being a, you know, a very fit referee. And uh, every time there's a break, he's always there. Great Britain certainly monopolising these scrum with the seventh scrum. Just the one scrum to the rest of the world. Gregory. <laughs> O'Fire. Just can't break loose. Good tackle there by the French hooker Valero. Edwards. Oh, this is a good, powerful run from Kevin Ward. A case third of Sean Edwards. Well, he looks upset, but it was a case there to Sean Edwards holding the ball too long. He was looking for support. The support didn't quite come, and the ball was knocked out of his hand.
I'll tell you what, Ray, this Dale Shearer, the lad on the floor now, uh, the full-back, he looks a very, very useful player. When he's got the ball in his hands, every time he has, he looks as though there's a, there's a break in it. A lot of hard work from this French hooker. Just a minute to go in this first half. Gary Miller still putting those passes out. That's a good one to Sorensen. Now then, Ratier has caught it. What can you do to the map ball? No. I think that's a, a bit of Papua New Guinea style rugby Ray. You know, they play that way in Papua New Guinea, very warm. And he must be thinking, what have I come to here? Shearer. Cleal again. Sorensen finds himself on the wing and puts a sidestep in. New map ball. This is good rugby. Poor Valero, the French hooker, didn't realise Ellery Hanley was standing there. Oh, well taken by Lachlan, now then, he's got men with him, he's got plans outside him, looks a forward pass, and it is a forward pass. Well, he'd be very, very disappointed with that, Ray, that was a lovely break, and I just think if he'd have held the ball, he'd be disappointed because he knows that should have been a try. Don't think we'll get the scrum. No, we won't. Disappointment on Lachlan's face, but I think Coach might really be happy at that. All square, 12 points each. For the second half, as we rejoin Alex Murphy and Ray French. Yes, Steve, as you said, all square. And Great Britain thankfully tightened up that defence, but I think really, Alex, they've got to take advantage of this scrum possession. Kevin Beardmore giving them a 7-1 to one, uh, scrum favour. Not really used it, so have they? No, I think uh, Great Britain have got to move the ball a bit more, they've got to keep possession, and, uh, you know, we've got to check people on. This is a very, very interesting player. He came over here, Alan Langer, with a big reputation, what he was going to do and what he wasn't going to do. I think on uh, points decision, Andy Gregory, the Great Britain scrum half, has it. Yeah, well, let's be fair to the lad, you know, uh, the scrum half can't play without the ball, can he? Well, some can, they. <laughs> Bringing Peter Brown, the substitute for Sam Bacco. <laughs> the Sunder providing a little bit of a problem for Paul Lockman. Side uh, with Stevenson taking a little bit of pressure off the forwards. Oh, well read by Sean Edwards. He could see Gavin Miller steaming in on the outside. There was a chance of an interception. Gregory Hanley. Not really been in the game so far, Ellery. No, he's he? not. He's not. Uh, but having said that, the lad who's just tackled him, Steve Eller, what a game he's having. He is closing everything down, and uh, you know he's like uh, cutting all the attacks off. What Great Britain are trying to produce. Oh, well taken. <laughs> well, the crowd went ooh, but I think uh, that tackle from Andy Platt, there's no real damage there. It was round the chest, it wasn't head high. Good little run there from Arnold Cremantini. Papua New Guinea left wing. Steve Eller, of course, a member of that all-conquering 1982 Australian side. Now playing with Wayfield Trinity and helping the revival there at Trinity. That's a good kick. There's a lot of good thinking going on out there. And this fella's a master tactician, you know, what he has when he has the ball in his hands, always makes it available and puts somebody in a gap. So can Great Britain continue this pack domination? They do. Well read there by Yella, a little bit high. John Holdsworth right on the spot. 
the new law this season is that all tackles around the neck, above the shoulders, are illegal. It doesn't matter whether the intent's there or whether it's accidental, they are illegal. And you, and you can't say that it's not illegal with uh, Paul Lachlan because he, he happens to be six foot two. Uh, so you'll have to go pitch your eye to get around him. And if you just look at this tackle now coming up, if you look, have a look where he takes him. Round the shoulders he's supposed to be, that's a little bit high, isn't it? Gregory. He's taking some holding, is this Kevin Ward? Possibly the best prop forward in the world today. <laughs> There's no love lost, certainly, between Kurt Sorensen and Andy Gregory. That's about the second little dust-up they've had between them. <laughs> Edwards. And this rest of the world side moving up very, very quickly. Certainly, Edwards and Gregory having great difficulty in opening out play. Hanley. Mike Gregory. Here's a chance to Platt. It's still all on. Martin will fire. He must be in. He is. 15th try for Martin O'Fire this season. Currently the rugby league's leading try scorer. And what a sensational impact has this ex Rosling Park and Barbarians rugby union winger had since he came into rugby league. Well, this is a try Great Britain needed. Not a very, very good ball, and it could have gone anywhere. And uh, but Martin O'Fire makes no mistake with it. When this fellow has the ball, it's a try all the way. It's the sheer pace and the speed of reaction, Alec, that he's over before you can move, isn't he? Yeah, he's a good player, eh? he's, got a, he's got a lot of thoughts and thinks very quickly. So, David Stevenson. Looking for a th fourth kick. And he gets it, no problem, so good early start to it. Great Britain, 18 points to 12 then here at Headingley. Well, this is the try Great Britain needed. Andy Platt, Mike Gregor to Andy Platt. He just flips the ball out anywhere. This could have been a little bit dangerous, but it goes to the right man in the right place, and Mr. Afire does not miss these. Picks himself up very quickly. Just watch him go round here. Puts daylight between everybody. Whew. Mike Gregory. I think we'll be looking for, for a run from this Bonington second row, like the one he did in that. Third test at Sydney. Woodell. Very similar tactics here from uh, the Great Britain coach, Mal Reilly, using Woodell and Ward either side of the play of the ball, checking it 1 2, 1 2, then moving it out wide. Lockley. Two of these rest of the world and, uh, players now, I think, beginning to run sideways. The Great Britain uh, pack coming up very, very quickly to take the tackle. I think this was always going to be on the cards, Ray, because uh, a fit, very fit Great Britain side uh, had always going to be a big handful. And uh, some of these lads, like I say, are finding it the pace very, very quick for them. Gregory. That's a Good ball, oh, and that's a better ball from Schofield. Plunge, good tackle from Mark Graham, good covering there from a second row forward. 33 years of age in the veteran stage, but still as experienced as ever Graham there. Saved a good try. Schofield. And the sixth tackle. Gregory's having a go himself, oh, he's lost it. Well, I think he could have scored, Alec, if he'd uh, kept hold of the ball. Yes, I think that could have been a try. I don't think Andy realised he was so close to the line, and uh, he tried to make absolutely sure. Okay. 
Certainly this rest of the world side handling well, but not really moving forward. As I said, one or two of them beginning to go sideways. It's some really strong, ferocious tackling. I think uh, what's going the rest of the world uh, game now, Ray, they've got a lot of Chiefs, but not a lot of Indians. Uh, it's one of them cases where who's going to run with the ball? Well, let's see if David plans can. Lachlan. There's still some real talent in this rest of the world side. Enough individuals to suddenly pluck six or 12 points from nowhere. But here's a man, Kevin Ward. Notice Beardmore again, but that's a good tackle. Beardmore again at the side, backing up. But a good tackle by Gavin Miller. Edwards. Great Britain really turning the pressure on now. Just five yards from the rest of the world line. Gregory. Looking for the long pass. And he doesn't get it. I think Kevin Ward will be very disappointed with that one because if he looked on his uh, left hand side, he had Michael Gregory steaming up and it was a searching try. Yes, he possibly possibly chose the wrong option, but again he saw his club mate Beardmore alongside him, didn't he? Good run there from Peter Brown. And this I think is what it needs from this rest of the world side. It needs one or two of these forwards here, like Brown, like Cleal, to come with this ball. But so they, I think it needs them to hold the ball for a while, Alec, doesn't it? Yes, I think they're trying to play, uh, you know, fancy football, and really they're just uh, not getting all the ball from the scrums, and uh, they're having to work that little bit harder. They're trying a little bit too hard. Waddell. In fact, you said that Don Furness said they wanted to play simple football, but it's Great Britain who are playing the simple football, isn't it? Yes, it is basic football, run back up and tackle, and he'll win you most matches. Gregory and the sixth tackle 18 points to 12 for Great Britain oh that's a good ball from Gregory just Kevin Ward's weight and momentum not checking him though so the sixth tackle and the handover It's gone in this second half. Great Britain, I think, at the moment, firmly in control, but such talent in these backs in the rest of the world. Steve Ella, Michael O'Connor, Dale Shearer, any one of those three capable of a 60-70 yard try. I think what we're going to see is, uh, a, a, you know, a, re a replacement coming on now, Ray, and, uh, you know, but, uh, we're going to get the ball out. Yeah. Yes, and Cliff Lyons, the loose forward, come stand off for the world, coming on for Noel Cleal. Schofield. And it's Cliff Lyons already. No, it's Steve Eller. Steve Eller. He's having a very good game, this fella, Ray. He's, uh, he's picked up a lot of loose balls and, uh, you know, he's had a tremendous game in the loose. I think Don Fern has made a shrewd move here. They're at in half back. Cliff Lyons, the manly standoff and the lead standoff, come on at loose forward for Noel Cleal. I think he probably wants a little bit of organisation in the pack, Alec. Well, he, what he needs is a, a fresh pair of legs. Right? Oh, this is a good run from Sorensen, looking for the support. Just can't get it away. Sean Edwards clamped the ball. Langer. Numapo. Oh, well taken by Lyons. That's a good ball to Mark Graham. Here's a chance. He's got Peter Brown. Well, it's as we said. This rest of the world side have got sufficient stars. They can score. And good combination there between the two Kiwis. Mark Graham and Peter Brown. But it was that man, Cliff Lyons. I was saying, I think, coach Don Ferner brought him on to put a bit of organisation there. And he did do. He put the pass out. And Brown the score. So it should be an easy kick and could bring the rest of the world back on level terms again. 18-16 to Great Britain. And O'Connor to take the kick.
Two points, so still then, Alex, all to play for rest of the world, 18. Great Britain, 18. Well, this is a lovely bit of coaching by Don Fern. He's brought a fresh man on in, and just watch what the fresh man does. Cliff Lyons, a lovely ball here inside to Mark Graham. Big, strong, running lad. And look at Peter Brown. Look at that. It's time to turn round, have a look, and says, Come on, lads, I've got nowhere to go. Right under the middle. Good try. Yes, and just as O'Connor was completing that kick, the Great Britain coach Mal really bringing on the number 15, Roy Powell, for Andy Platt. Good, solid tackler the, with the lead club. Very much at home here at Hedewick. Miller. I think if Great Britain want to win this side, I think they've, they've got to shut down Gavin Miller and Steve Eller in the midfield. Yes, they? I think uh, Steve Eller's having a magnificent game, and uh, Gavin Miller's just giving him plenty of ball. I think if uh, he realises that he's got two good bats outside him, anything can happen. Schofield, plunge. He's still going, he likes to come inside this line, he weighs about 14 stone, very powerful, and of course... Great Britain simply mopping up these scrums. That's the tenth scrum to rest of the world have taken two scrums. Gregory. I do think it'd be a little bit better lay if, they, if they did ray, lay the ball off. I mean, there's Great Britain have got men outside and they're just turning the ball back in time after time. And Lee had all his time there to. Just catch that ball. Roy Powell. The sixth tackle, Great Britain edging closer, 18 points each. Gregory, oh, that's a nice chip for Hanley. Beautifully done. No, he's not. Has he given the try? No, he's not. Well, is he? He signalled he signaled to me offside, but no, he's letting it go. It's a try. It didn't look offside to me, and nor does it look offside to Mr. Holdsworth. Beautifully done. Obviously a well-rehearsed move. And Hanley shot through like a bolt. Great Britain back in the lead. Well, this is class at the very highest level. There's no problem. Just watch Andy Gregory all the time in the world and to a class player. Look at that. So, David Stevenson. Four goals already. And again, an early reply to the rest of the world. I think it's the... Great Britain organisation, really, versus the individualism of this rest of the world side. But there's another two points. 24 points to 18 now for Great Britain. Well, it's nice to see practice moves come off, Ray. Just watch Andy Gregory. It's time to take the lace out of the ball. Just watch. No problem. Here it is. Ellery, go after that. Look at him. Thank you. Easy, isn't it? It is easy, Alec, it looks easy, but I've known many a player knock on in that sort of circumstance. It wants some doing, doesn't it? Well, having said that, Ray, just look what's happened, and I don't <laughs> think he's too happy about it, neither is he. No. What a good sportsman this fella is. He doesn't even like dropping the ball. <laughs> well, here's a chance then for the rest of the world. Can they win a ball from this scrum? It's Alan Langer to put in, it should be Valerdo's <laughs> head, but he doesn't get it. I will say one thing, Ray, Kevin uh, Ward and Beardsmore, the, the, the foot must be sore where they've got that amount of ball. It must be about 12-2, the penalty, uh, these scrums. Yeah, it's offside, and I, th I think as well it's, uh, it's testimony to the rest of the world side that many of them, of course, finished their season in Australia and New Zealand over a month or six weeks ago, and the defensive work they've had has been amazing. I mean, Beardmore taking three against the head. That's a good ball, and that's a good run from Cruanti. Very dangerous runner. And every time Great Britain seemed to be edging away, back come the rest of the world. Miller. 
That's a good pass again. Lions. Ella. Good tackle. Good tackle there from Mike Gregory. Langer switching play to Brown. Numapo well taken. The sixth tackle, considerable pressure here for, for Great Britain. Langer again. Oh, and well done by Edwards. Risky, adventurous, but it gained 20 yards. I think that's what you call confidence, Ray. When you've got uh, to do that in your own 25, I think you've got a good understanding with your teammates. Waddell. Certainly worked all day, this lad here, Waddell. Came into the game rather anonymously from the Burton Rugby Union Club, asked for a trial at Blackpool, and here he is, playing for Great Britain. That's a good kick again. Oh, well done. Powell, he's got Schofield, he's got Hanley. Good tackle by Balnumapo. Read the situation well. A fire. Oh, just, just caught at the corner there, but that's good wing play again there by a fire coming right across from the left wing over to the right he's certainly hungry for tries this lad top of the league try scorer so far 15 this season and it's interesting to see the short kicks being used either because the rest of the world side are coming up so quick now aren't they well i think what you can see ray is they, they realize that uh, it's the, the you know the shortage of, of play and the uh, the great britain lads are just fit and uh, they're just putting into open spaces this is what you call it, you know, this fellow, Roy Powell, has got the ball here now, but just watch the second man after Hanley has the ball here. He holds the ball, he gives it good tackle coming up on Schofield here. Now, what were a fire? A fire has come right back to the other wing. Numapo had a good, strong game, this lad. Hardly the, the climate suddenly to come out of the 100-degree temperatures of Papua New Guinea and be plunged here into Yorkshire approaching winter. But here's another one, Cruanti. I can remember these lads 18 months ago, Alec, when they came on tour. They were clad in overcoats, balaclavas and scarves, but they, they entertained everybody, didn't they? Oh, yes, and, and not only that, Ray, uh, what they're doing is, I mean, the climate over, over here now is coming into our winter, and they've just left, uh, you know, something in the region of the 80s and 90s, and um, they must be absolutely freezing. Just six points difference still 20 minutes to go I don't think Great Britain can afford to be comfortable yet but and at last a scrum for I don't think Alan Langer knows what to do with the ball O'Connor been well looked after this afternoon by Gary Schofield I don't think Michael O'Connor's uh, you know having the best of luck with running chances I think uh, every time he gets the ball there's one or two men waiting for him Little shimmy from Langer there, Lions. They've been a very, very good battle with this lad, Cruanti, on the wing, and David Plange. <laughs> he's got a lot of pace, there, hasn't he? Has he? He's a little nugget of a player. He's one of them who, you know, he's very close to the ground and doesn't like being down. That's a good pass to Lions again, and a good tackle by Gregory. Well, there was nobody there. Cliff Lyons is complaining, he got up, he played the ball, and there was nobody behind him. I think this Great Britain uh, side now, Ray, really should be moving this ball about. I think uh, they've got men outside who want to run with the ball, and they're just turning one pass in too many. That's a good pass. To a fire, he's tricky. If he gets space, this lad... 
Oh, that's good rugby. To Ward, he's got Schofield and plans out. Just look at that prop forward goal. And a good tackle by Cruanti. I was just saying, possibly one of the finest props in the world now, this big Kevin Ward from Castleford. Right, Gregory, to Schofield. No problems. Gary Schofield, they call him the poacher. Hanging on there for the tries. 28 points to 18. Classic support player there from the that centre. He followed both of the prop forward plunges. First Kevin Ward, then Hugh Wigel there, the number 10 in our picture. And that's how you get the tries. So Schofield now, 15 tries this season, level with the fire. And Great Britain, as Alex said, moving the ball out now, pushing it out wide, testing the fitness of this rest of the side, rest of the world pack. I think I think you can see now, Ray, that little bit of extra fitness coming into the game. You know, there's uh, Great Britain at a side who uh, they're all in match practice, they're all playing regular, and uh, you can see it paying off. David Stevenson then already five goals to his credits. It's the so good kicking performance, good exhibition of goal kicking from David Stevenson. 30 points to 18 from Great Britain. Well, this is a good try for Great Britain. Waddell is very, very hard, this lad. Makes the uh, initial break. Good support play by Michael Gregory. And look who's there. You don't have to ask it, do you? Mr. Porcher himself. Now we see it again here with uh, Waddell. He's worked very, very hard. A big, strong lad here. Makes the ball available. Good support play again. And Gregory. Schofield doesn't worry about these. Look at that. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see the uh, response from the rest of the world side because I don't think they'll want to throw the towel in. Oh, this is good running now. Mike Gregory. David plans just couldn't get there. It looks as if Sam Bacco's coming back on, and they are. They're taking the French hooker off Valero. I think they may think that, well, we're not winning the ball, so let's have another player in the loose. And Mal really be pleased with this. I think a lot of controversy as to whether he's going to continue with this. Great Britain coaching job, but he'll give his decision next week, and I think there are many of us who hope that he continues. It's interesting to see what the rest of the world side have now done. They've now put uh, Gavin Miller, uh, the Australian number 13, uh, as hooker, and uh, he's just won the first scrum. Yeah, in fact, I, uh, I saw him working for, for Cronulla, actually, in the summer, uh, Alex. He's not a bad hooker. Oh, well, that's a bad pass. Waddell. He's working hard, this lad, isn't he? He's like a tank, he, you know, he just goes forward, he doesn't worry who's at the side of him, he just runs over top of him. There's no doubt about it. Well, is it a forward pass? It is. David Plans looks disappointed, but referee John Holdsworth, perfect positioning, right on the spot. Very experienced referee, this lad from Kipax. <coughs> well, this again, a good decision by John Holdsworth. The lovely ball from Andy Gregory, but just watch what happens. Sean Edwards pops it up, no problem. Forward pass. A little bit of argy bargy there, and that's the, the the third scrum now. Yes, he's saying to Kevin Ward, get get your feet across. Think of the battles rare the scrum halves. This fella's got to say he's got to be out. He's even clapping as uh, his mate Sean Edwards has go, goes off. But what a good game this fella's having. Yes, I think um, Mal really there, bringing David Hume, the witness half back on. Substitute for Sean Edwards. And I think just wanting to reward the loyalty of his players. There's number 14, David Hume. And again, a lad, wonderful tour. 
Gregory. Powell. Hasn't he just had a good game, this new Mapo? Very strong lad. Doesn't seem to be running at any great pace, but seems to have the ability to glide past players. I think this big crowd uh, and all way uh, appreciate that kind of running because he has played well, this little fella. He's run with the ball and uh, he's made it look very easy. Oh, that was a good pass from O'Connor to Rattier. But there's the difference between pace and blistering pace. So Fire really had this French captain within five or six yards. I wouldn't like this fella to chase me down the back alley, Ray, the way he can run, you know. He can half leg it. So Gregory to feed, and that's a good scrum. Well, I couldn't understand that unless it was a kick downfield for a, a fire to chase. Shearer. to go can this rest of the world side come back still a lot of class there a lot of power one or two of the forwards i think uh, a little bit tired but it's one or two of these backs good ball from o'connor to cruanti lions to brown had a good game this uh, this lad Peter Brown since he came on as a substitute. Gavin Miller now just watch if he can get this pass away. He does to Numapo. Always worth watching Gavin Miller. Able to stand up in the tackle, able to get the pass away. And a penalty. That's a nice decision, actually, Ray. What he's actually done is there's a, there's a man off the ball who pulled uh, Numapo back and. Uh, he gave a, a offside. It was a good penalty, actually, because uh, the referee is right on the spot again. So, the first tap penalty we've seen from the rest of the world side. Complicated, but it's a try, and a well-worked try. It was done at slow motion. It was most meticulous, it was methodical, but certainly produced the goods, four points. And at last, Rattier making amends for that drop pass in the opening quarter. 30 points to 22. Well, I, I think for this move, you've got to go to night school. Just watch it. Very, very clever, very slick, and a lovely pass here, a lovely ball out to Rattier. He does well to take this chance. Carl's Martin are fighting two minds. Good try. And it was the... Intrusion there by Dale Shearer just on the right hand side there coming in that really led to that try. Good fullback play. Difficult kick for O'Connor. No, not a good one. So still 30 points for Great Britain, 22 for the rest of the world, but nine minutes to go. Eight points difference and nine minutes to get the points in. And you know, Ray, with any, you know, with players like of this class on the on the park, Michael O'Connor, you know, you cannot ease up because they've got the pairs to score from any part of the game. And Noel Cleal just coming back on the field for Kurt Sorensen. Both of the coaches, Don Ferner and Mal really, agreed before this match that they would. Uh, allow the four substitutes uh, rule whereby the substitutes could come on and off back home well it looked to knock on but referee Holsworth said off his knee and certainly this rest of the world side coming back again Gregory
I think one of the significant factors, uh, Alec, is that the rest of the world have won three scrums with Gavin Miller. That's been a big difference. Yes, they're, they're all in the ball a little bit better now. You know, they was they wasn't playing the six tackles, and um, of course, he was giving great bit in the ball back. But uh, having said that, Ray, they've not played together before, and uh, I think they've played exceptionally well. Gregory. That's a good pass to Schofield. Oh, beautifully beaten uh, Numapo. But good cover again by Noel Clean. Two or three times this big burly second row for the Manly Club in Australia. He's made his way out there and he stopped some promising movements. Oh, well done. I think what they've done with uh, with Crusher, with Bai, has been on the bench. They've probably had the oxygen bottle out and said, here, just get that down here for 20 minutes because he is a different player when he's had a rest. Numapo. You notice where this uh, Alan Langer, the, the, the little lad, he keeps going out to an half back, and I think he'd be a little bit better if he got away from the middle of the park because all the players around there. This was the style I, I saw him when I saw him play at uh, Lang Park for the Brisbane Broncos. He, uh, he was going a lot from the acting out back position. Of course, that's the Australian style, Alec, isn't it? Yes, they expect the uh, half backs to run a lot from acting out back. Stevenson. Great Britain really do need another two or three points to be absolutely safe. And I well, think yeah. they, they'd want to score another try, Ray, because uh, really there's £5,000 for the winners of this game, so I don't think anybody will be easing up. Gregory. <laughs> Hanley. Schofield. And the sixth tackle. Not a knock on, straight through his, his hands. Rattier, just five minutes left, eight points difference between the sides. Great Britain 30, rest of the world 22. Shearer. He's had a good game there, hasn't he? This, this lad, he run, run well with the ball and uh, support you play. There's certainly no letting up in this rest of the world side. O'Connor. Oh, that's good play. I think really, Rain, uh, when they fit these lads, they, they, they expect to put them chances away. They're just lacking that little bit of match practice. Oh. oh, good ball to Wall, a beautiful ball. He's got David Hume coming inside him. David Hume and Ellery Hanley got in each other's way, I think, yes. I think uh, Ellery Hanley just acknowledging that he probably shouted to David Hume for the ball. He, they were both coming in at the wrong angles. Well, I think it's what you say here, too many cooks spoil the broth, and I think this is what's happened here. Just look, the queuing up, good play by Dale Shearer, you just watch him, lays off him here, now watch Ellery. He shout for the ball, but David Hume definitely should not have given it. Shearer. A case really, Alec, of Ellery coming in at the, the wrong handle. Lions, that's a good pack. Yes, I think uh, it was one of them things where uh, this club match, Ray, probably put that away every week. Clean. He's a big man, he's, isn't he? He <laughs> certainly enjoyed himself this afternoon. A big grin on his face. Lions. Peter Brown. Langer. Gavin Miller. No let up from this rest of the world side. £5,000 prize to the winners of these, this match. Oh, good, good movement there from Graham. He's got Langer with him. But good cover. Good cover by Roy Powell. 
gift for the rest of the world, so I just uh, I'm to pinch a try back here, eh? Anything can happen. Equally good cover from Hugh Grattieri, right wing for the rest of the world. And a little cramp there, I think, from Arnold Cremante. I think he, um, he, he might be feeling rails, though he's got a bit of uh, fresh frostbite in that leg. <laughs> Referee John Holsworth just stopping play, just signalling to the, the two packs just break apart just a minute to go I think it's been a, a very very good game of rugby league Ray. I think this is a beautiful move marching a fire people keep telling me this fellow's only learning the game I'll tell you what when he does learn it what a good player lovely ball from Gary Schofield to plunge goes round him good tackle by Michael O'Connor just one minute to go 30 points to 22 for Great Britain no let up from this rest of the world side they've played hard a lot of them have flown 12,000 miles out of their season to take part in this celebration and all credit to them and especially this little man Baldo Mapo Sam Baco. I think you can say about the rest of the world side where they've certainly not give this game up they're playing to the death and uh, there's been some very very good football that's a good run by Miller he's got clean Back to Miller. Ella. Oh, good tackle by Mike Gregory. Lions. Langer. Miller. Oh, this is good play. I think that would have been nice for uh, Crusher to just uh, catch on to that ball, Ray. It would have been very, very interesting. <clears throat> Great Britain, I think, will just want to hold on to the ball here. They've injury time, they've earned this win, they've worked hard. And I think, Ray, it's been a, a very, very good game of uh, rugby league. There's been some good football, there's been some good tackling, and uh, I think everybody's enjoying it. And we've seen some good tries. David Hume then, acting half-back. Been sat on the bench for 70 minutes, keen to get in the game. That little chip kick again, but well read by Lyons. Cruanti. Good second half performance, I think, from the the rest of the world. Since Gavin Miller went into the hooking position, they've got some scrum possession. We've seen a little bit more from Langer. That's a good ball, clean again. Just couldn't take it. So a last flourish here from Andy Gregory. Just. Looking to his Wigan half-back partner, what are we doing with this ball, he says. <laughs> Kevin Miller can't get down. <laughs> Experienced hooker Kevin Beardmore against him, he says, I'm not letting you in. Well, he's got a penalty. There's no way Kevin Beardmore was letting Miller in. So, penalty, rest of the world. Seconds to go. New Mapo. Three to two. Oh, that's a good strong run. O'Connor's taken it. He's in. But 
good quick tap penalty from Alan Langer, scored by O'Connor, but it was that chunky centre from Papua New Guinea, Val Numapo, who created the half chance, had a good game. <laughs> Certainly, O'Connor, I think, deserves that try. Well, I, I think this little fella's deserved this. He's a very, very strong little man, Namapo. Look what he does now. He, he, and Michael O'Connor, for once in his life, he's got a running chance. He doesn't miss these, only had two goals at it. A fire's chasing him, but just too late. So, 30 points to 26. A difficult kick again for O'Connor. He side foots it, he flaps the ball, but it's there. Two points in the game now then, 30 points to 28. Into injury time. Can the rest of the world do it? No, they can't. There's the hooter. But I think a score there, 30 points to 28, Alec. Fair enough, I think, for Great Britain. Yes, it's been a great occasion, it's been some great rugby league, and I think it's been very, very enjoyable. Yes, I think that win there has helped to build on the confidence gained by that victories in Australia. A lot of work by Reilly, and I think now deservedly receiving the accolades of the crowd.